All right, Scott, to be corrupt or not to be corrupt? That's the question. All right, Scott, we're here. Pixel Crow Games, Beat Cop. What do you think? I didn't know what to think at first. Dove right into it. I love it. Can't it's, stop playing it now. It's a lot of fun, right? For me, right off the hop, we're looking at kind of a 8-bit style game. Uh, reminds me of those old computer games we used to play when we were kids. Uh, maybe dating myself a little bit here, but <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And kind of the basic premise of the story is you start off, uh, Jack Kelly, detective. Detective Jack Kelly. He gets a call about a burglary at a kind of a high political figure's home. He shows up, uh, action right off the hop, gunfire right at him, he ends up taking out a perp, and he hears something upstairs in the house. And that's kind of where the mystery of the whole game starts and ends, and we're trying to figure out what happened in this house. Exactly. He kind of shows up there, he hears something upstairs, he goes to investigate, he notices there's an open safe and an open window. Someone's escaped. He's kind of missed it. With that guy downstairs that kind of threatened him right off the hop, slowed him down, he wasn't able to catch the real perp. Yeah. So this is kind of where the story gets a little gray. Um, we played through it quite a bit, but the one thing that hasn't been clear yet is the fact that Jack Kelly now has been demoted to a beat cop from detective. Back on the streets. Exactly. Now. He's currently under investigation by Internal Affairs because they seem to think that Jack Kelly may have taken something from that senator's home. Uh, was it diamonds? Diamonds or something else. We're not sure yet. Exactly. So now Jack Kelly finds himself on the mean streets of Brooklyn, New York. We're in the mid-80s here. And any kind of buddy cop movie you've ever seen, I think, pretty much sums up what this game is. Yeah. You, your first kind of contact with the police kind of shows you around. He's a uh, stereotype for sure. That's oh, yeah. You got your hard-nosed sergeant kind of doing the morning briefing, and he's just giving everybody the gears, right? Oh, that and the guy who can't even be bothered to get your name right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So you get sent out kind of on your first day and you're taking over somebody's beat. You're walking blocks, you're meeting people, and it's Fat Mike. Fat Mike's the cop, used to run the beat, now it's yours. He kind of leads you around for the first day or so. Uh, events kind of unfold as the day goes on. But the basic premise of this game is every day uh, you run through for your 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. work day. Yeah. And you get a briefing at the beginning of the day and you've got tasks you have to complete you over have the course a, of the You day. have a quota, just like everybody has always suspected. There's a <laughs> ticket quota you must get that day. So exactly. That's so kind of where your tasks begin. <laughs> You're handing out parking tickets, you're handing out uh, fines for tire issues, broken little tail lights, all different kinds of things. Whatever the sergeant wants that day, you probably should try your best to get done because let me tell you, he is not a happy camper the next day if you're not getting these jobs done. And there is, uh, it gets a little complicated too because you can just forge tickets. You can straight up just give somebody a ticket for a crime they did not commit <laughs> and you can get away with it. You can sometimes. tow somebody's car and they've done nothing. Maybe you need to tow the car because there's other people than just the sergeant that are looking for your help in this game. And they might pay more. <laughs> exactly. And more often. <laughs> yeah, so there's two factions in this game. There's the crew, which uh, is a bit of a gang style, and then there's also the mob, who happens to run Louis Pizzeria. So funny enough there. But you do jobs for these two factions, essentially, and you gain their respect, you know, if you're completing the work for them or if you're not getting it done for them. So you don't want to make promises you can't keep, especially with these two factions. Oh, if you're like me, you've broken a lot of promises because there's just too much to do in the day that you can't keep track of everything. There's just no way. Yeah. And some of them contrast with each other, too. And even if you're in good with the mafia, we'll say, you might be stepping on everybody on your beats kind of day. You're ruining their day, you're, you're making them angry, and they don't like you anymore. So you have to balance your job as a policeman and a corrupt policeman, <laughs> and you still have to keep everybody happy on the street. So. And, that, and that's the thing here. So you've got alimony payments, and this seems to be the big thing for this game. You only make so much money a day as a police officer, whether you're writing tickets or you know, you're stopping a hostage situation. There's a lot of different things. A lot of things come and, up. And you get bonuses for completing some of this police work, this kind of bonus police work. So you find out how much money you make at the end of the day. But what it really comes down to is that these alimony payments start coming a little bit sooner, but you're also getting them and they're multiplying in how much you actually owe. Yeah. And you start to realize really quickly that your job as a police officer isn't going to quite cut it. That paycheck it's isn't going to pay for that alimony payment. And what it turns out is if you don't make those payments, 
You're out of the precinct. That's, You're and done. that's the end of the game, too. Yeah. So you just cannot let that happen. You, you gotta to get that. that money no matter what it takes. And whether it's taking bribes from people that don't want parking tickets or doing jobs for the mafia or the <laughs> or the crew, you gotta make that money. And the idea is not to get caught. You don't want to get in trouble. But it's funny because it really, you're trying to clear your name. The internal investigator, IA is trying to figure out if you stolen these diamonds or whatever else was in that safe. And you're trying to clear your name, but at the same time, you're trying to also not lose your job. And things get more complicated as the story kind of unravels. You get, it's harder to clear your name in some ways. You have old contacts <laughs> that come true. to talk to you. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of interpersonal conversation. It's a very big game on the text. You oh, it's a, it's a dialogue game. There's absolutely no vocals in this game. Yeah. It's background music and it's dialogue blurbs. And if you don't like reading, you might not love this game. But let me tell you, the, the conversations that people have, whether it's just somebody oh, that's walking good. down the street and you see their, their text bubble pop up and you see what they say, and there, it's the interaction between the characters is really where this game for me took off. Like I like the story, and I'm not a big point and click guy. I like a little bit of action. And even though this game isn't flush with action when you think of police work, there it's just a lot of fun little tasks that you have to do. But as the story progresses, you start to kind of learn about some of these characters, and it's <laughs> there's the, a lot the of The characters fun. are very likable too. There's a few <laughs> of them without giving away any start of story things. You meet these people, and you spend a lot of time with them. Uh, over the course of a couple of weeks, you might find that some of them are into some shady business. Some of them are just trying to be nice people. Yep. Uh, but it's New York City, so there's a lot of shady business going oh, on. Oh yeah, there is some stuff going on in this game that really makes you question, you know, whether you're a good person or not sometimes, because they ask you to do some things, especially if it's the mob or the crew, one of the two factions. They ask you to do certain things that are definitely illegal. I mean, I went searching through somebody's vehicle looking for drugs, and it's funny because you get a task from one of these factions to go do something. So you can accept or decline. Mm -hmm. And if you decline, you don't lose any reputation with them because every day you kind of get an opportunity to do a job. They'll ask you more and more. Exactly. They'll keep asking. But the problem is if you accept it and you do what they ask, there's always another decision you have to make at the end. Because you're a police officer, you know, there's ethics involved here. So they wanted me to go look for some drugs in an unmarked vehicle. I went, searched through said vehicle, found said drugs and then gives me the option to report it or bring it back to the mob. <laughs> and if I report it, I may not get as much money as if I were just to bring it back to the mob. So these are the kinds of decisions in this game that make it interesting and make it fun, kind of immerse you in this story. You, you don't want to upset anybody too much, but you also need to stay a police officer and, and, you, you, can't. Have to, and you have to make the people on your beat happy. Yeah, and you can't help but step on somebody's toes eventually. Someone's that getting is mad. Gonna happen, yeah. Someone's getting mad. And that'll draw the story in different directions, <laughs> I'm thinking. After a couple weeks of being good with people, you get other opportunities that open up. Exactly. And let me tell you, playing through this game, I've run into a few scenarios as, the poli as a police officer where you're doing your police work, and there's some like intense things that happen. Like There's a hostage situation. There's also a crazy person that you're trying to negotiate with. There's a lot of different things in this game, and when you think it's a simple game, you're working on the same block all the time. So you're using the same background, and it's the same, you know, you see some of the same characters as, the, as it goes on, but you've got all these missions, and they, they tell you at the beginning of the game, you can't get them all done. Yeah. You have to choose what you want to get done. It when is you, clear. you prioritize your work, whether it be for one of the factions or your police work, anything like that. So it's it's a lot of fun and it really makes you want to decide. And that's where the whole corrupt, not corrupt thing comes That's a play. very hard decision for me. It makes the game hard to play because I'm a completionist all the time. <laughs> I, I yeah. try and get everything done. There's a lot of achievements, kind of hidden achievements in this game. Yeah, there. I think they might all be secret, or a lot of them anyways. Yeah, the, the story related part. ones don't tell you what they are. No. Uh, a lot of them are daily kind of quests that if you miss that opportunity, maybe even days earlier, if you don't talk to the right person, that could just be it. That could yeah. be the end of the quest line. So the nice thing is, for people like you that are completionists, you actually get the option to restart the days. Yeah. So like we said, it's a nine to six work day. But if you do something maybe during that day or you miss something, you can always go back and replay that day. But anything that you did the previous turn on that day, you've lost. Now you're starting from fresh like you've never played that day before again. Yeah. So for stuff like that where maybe you'll play through this game, you might not get all the achievements, find out which ones you haven't gotten yet, 
and you start playing back through this game to try to you know complete this game 100 because it's a 20 dollar game and let me tell you for 20 bucks there's a lot of game here i'm gonna complete it i'd like to see a b cop 2 or another version something very similar to this style of game maybe with a little bit bigger of a map exactly different background different scenery a bit of a different environment yeah. right there's a lot of ways they could take a game like this and i think if pixel crow comes out with another game that's very stylistic like this i think that it's gonna be successful as far as i'm concerned this game you definitely is, have my money <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it hooked me as soon as i saw it, i saw the trailer for this game i was like i gotta get this and i'm, I'm a, in on this i'm game. a fan of the art too I, yeah. I like the way it looks the 16-bit kind of look of it it reminds yeah. me of some other smaller arcade games that i've yep. really put time into and loved in the past yeah All right, Scott, if we gotta score this game, how are you gonna score? I really love this game. Uh, it keeps me coming back for more, and I need to see how all these little decisions work out. Uh, I have to give that an eight and a half out of 10. All right, you know what? I'm in the neighborhood with you. Let's say I'm in that Bronx, Brooklyn neighborhood with you. <laughs> I'm actually gonna give this game a nine. Beat Cop has a fun and classic art style. Trying to keep the balance of good and bad is what makes this game fun, but at times it can feel repetitive. 